everyone for joining us. This is week 17 of the weekly web training live from ACHQ. Um, I am Matthew Palumbo, the national trainer for audio control. And we're gonna talk today about the Epicenter family of products. So for those of you that, uh, you know, I'm sure just about everybody's familiar with Epicenters. Um, even those guys that don't really know how they work or don't know much about them have probably at least heard of them. Um, you know, the product is uh, uh, in the, you know, 20, uh, almost 30 years, I believe, range of being uh, produced. So definitely a, a popular product. Believe it or not, it's the best selling uh, processor of all time since it's been around for quite a little while. Um, but it's also one of the most popular uh, audio processors, which is pretty cool to, to think about. Um, something that's been around for a while, something that we've been making for a long time that we've continued to improve upon, but something that's that popular. You know, I mean, there's guys that we hear from on a daily basis that say, you know, oh, I had an epicenter in my car back in fill in the blank, you know, the early 90s or whatever it was, and I just put a new system in my car. It's the first system I've done in years, and I had to have an epicenter in there, and, and that's pretty cool to hear. You know, that's, uh, that's awesome. So we love hearing feedback and stuff like that. It's always fun. So Anyway, uh, with the uh, training and stuff for today, we're going to dig into a little bit more about the Epicenter, and I want to start out with what makes it different and what does it do. And the first thing I like to bring up is the difference between the Epicenter and AccuBase. There is a common misconception for a lot of guys that um, are familiar with the audio control product line, but a lot of them look at the... Um, amplifiers or some of our line converters and things like that and they see AccuBase and they go oh yeah that's that base processing thing um, that's the same thing as an epicenter uh, I actually had a conversation yesterday with a guy on Facebook that was you know like oh yeah the LC7i has got epicenter built into it and obviously that's not the case so here's the big difference the difference is AccuBase is a technology that's built into some of our products and epicenter is a family of products Okay, so there is not a product that's called AccuBase. There are products that are called the Epicenter. So when we're looking at these products, what we're basically looking at is, yes, they're both um, you know, base enhancing or base restoration devices, but they do what they do very, very differently. And here's what I mean by that. So when you're looking at the Epicenter, the Epicenter is a product that is restoring base. So long story short or layman's terms, it's putting base back into the signal path where there was none. Okay, it's creating base that was otherwise non-existent in the original source material. So whether that is a just old poor recording, you know, something that was recorded in the 60s or 70s and just didn't have um, a lot of base with the original mix or the original production of that song, or sometimes it is a matter of compression, right? MP3 files, um, you know, especially the, the older ones back before we all realized that MP3s were so bad. Um, a lot of us that were using MP3s, you know, 15, 20 years ago, were like, you know, they don't sound the same. Well, it's because when they compress music into an MP3 file, they chop off, you know, the very high highs and the very low lows of the song to make it fit into a file format. So, um, the epicenter is great at restoring that base back in, and I'm going to talk more about that in just a second. AccuBase is different. AccuBase is to restore base that was lost because of a factory roll-off or factory dynamic EQ, something like that. So if there's a factory radio in the vehicle or factory sound system in there, and as you turn up the volume, the base stops getting louder at a certain point, that's what we would describe as base roll-off or maybe even a dynamic EQ that is, you know, maybe somewhat flat uh, or even has a little bit of a bass boost at low volumes, but as you turn up the volume, that bass boost flattens out or even turns into a somewhat of a high pass filter. Um, the other one that you're going to need uh, the epicenter for is some certain vehicles out there. Um, I've got a couple examples that I'll show you guys a little bit later, um, but there are some, some vehicles today that just require an epicenter as well, and they don't need AccuBase, they need an epicenter, and we'll dig into that in a little bit. So that's the first thing I want to start with, is just showing you guys kind of the difference between um, epicenter and AccuBase, and so here's a little bit of a, uh, a visual as to what that looks like. So on the, um, on the left side of the screen there is how the epicenter works. Essentially what the epicenter is doing is it's looking at whatever the lowest bass present is in the music or in the, um, you know, in the signal path, okay? So if the lowest frequency present is right around 60 hertz and there's nothing below that in a song, 
what the epicenter is going to do is put base back in one octave below. So it's going to put base back in and inject base in there, if you want to call it that, at 30 hertz. Okay. So you took a song that had some punchy, tight bass, which is great, but it didn't have anything real low. And we all know that we love that low, low bass, right? Um, there's a whole industry centered around low bass, okay? So um, that's really how the epicenter works, is it's gonna take that song that only had punchy 60 hertz bass, and now that song still has that punchy 60 hertz bass, but it also has some nice low rumble, feel it in your stomach, shake the whole car, 30 hertz bass as well. So pretty cool. On the other side of the screen there, you see AccuBase. And what AccuBase does is, if you have a look at the colored lines, the blue line would be factory roll off. So that's the factory stereo actually decreasing the bass as you're turning up the volume or at a certain volume level. And the red line represents AccuBase. So that's our products that have AccuBase technology, restoring that bass back into the system and even providing a boost if you want it. You can restore the bass just back to relatively flat or you can use AccuBase to even increase it past flat and give it a, a bump at a certain volume level if you want to. Um, and if you're interested more in AccuBase, we've done a, a whole lot of these trainings. I mentioned early on that this is week 17. Believe it or not, we've been doing these for 17 weeks, you guys. Um, some of you have been with us uh, from, from the very beginning. We talked about that last week a little bit. And it's, it's pretty crazy to think that we've been doing these since uh, early March. But anyway. Um, if you want to learn more about AccuBase and some of that, you can watch some of the previous trainings on Facebook, um, maybe the one about LC2i, 6i, 7i, that sort of thing. We dive pretty deep into AccuBase in that training if you want more info. So in the epicenter um, and, and how it works, I took this couple of screenshots earlier today just to give you a visual representation. And basically what I did, and I did this earlier so that we didn't have to sit here and hook up a bunch of stuff and, and you know waste your guys' time watching me connect wires. But basically what I did is I took my iPhone, I plugged it straight into the epicenter, okay? I ran the signal out of the epicenter uh, and into the DMRTA, okay? And I took a screen capture of what that signal looks like and I played the same song at the same volume and I took the screen capture at the same time. So I went 30 seconds into the song, took a screen capture, and that's what you see on the right hand side of the screen. Now that same song without the epicenter in place, so signal from my phone, just straight into the DMRTA, you can see on the left hand side of the screen. So now like in this case, this song had some bass in it, right? The song wasn't necessarily um, lacking bass. It wasn't all cut out or high passed out or mixed out of it, but it also wasn't a song that you know uh, particularly hits real hard in the lower octaves as you can see. Um, for those of you that don't necessarily know what you're looking at there, this is a RTA screenshot and an RTA, the real-time analyzer, will basically allow you to visualize sound or sound signal. So when we're looking at this, this is an electrical capture screenshot. So we are not using a microphone to capture this. This was actually the signal itself ran directly into the RTA. So when you're looking at an RTA, again, some of you are gonna go, yeah, I already know this. Some of you don't, so I'll just briefly explain it. On the RTA itself, the left-hand side of the RTA is gonna be all of your lower frequencies. You can see them labeled down at the bottom there. And the right-hand side of the RTA is gonna be your high frequencies with the middle of it being mid-range and mid-base. So just a, a quick layman's explanation for those of you that maybe don't know what you're looking at. So you can see instantly by those quick screenshots how much of a difference the epicenter made and all I did was literally unplug that signal and loop it through the epicenter. So I'll talk more about installation and where these go in the signal path and all that in just a few minutes. But first let's go over kind of what the epicenter family entails and what that means. So I think one of the things that we should talk about too, and, and I wanna to touch on this briefly, is the fact that there are a ton of base processors out there, okay? Let's just get that out there. There are a million base processors out there. If you are an online shopper and you search for base processor or something like that, you will see a million imposters. There are fakes, there are counterfeits, there are blatant ripoffs, there are copycats, there's all sorts of stuff out there that is trying to mimic what we've done with the epicenter. The thing is that the epicenter has patented circuitry in it, so you cannot copy it directly. They can try, they can try to do something that's similar, they can try to make something that's close, but you will never have the actual epicenter unless you're buying one that says audio control epicenter on it. And so that's one of those things that, believe it or not, we actually get asked a lot from consumers is, hey, you know, I found this thing that looks kind of like an epicenter. Is it the same thing? You know, is it gonna, 
increase the base in their system? Probably. Uh, will it hold up like an epicenter? No. Will it have the five-year warranty like an epicenter? No. Is it going to sound the same and do all the same stuff? No, it's not. So that's one of those things too, where there's even a lot of comparison videos out there from guys who have bought you know, a, a cheap knockoff and then a real epicenter and done comparisons with them. And the difference is, is definitely staggering. I mean, it's not a small difference. It's a huge difference. So um, that's one of those things where whether you're a consumer watching this, whether you're a shop watching this or a rep or whoever, and you get asked that question or you've seen these ripoffs out there, um, just kind of know that they really are not the same. Uh, it is different circuitry and it is a different sound at the end of the day. Um, a lot of them also do not have the uh, capability to do what the epicenter does with signal as far as being able to bump up that signal voltage. So I just wanted to do a, a quick uh, little PSA there and, and mention that, you know, unless it says audio control epicenter on the outside, it's not the real deal. So just keep that in mind uh, for anybody out there that's kind of considering one of these things for their system. So let's get into what is in the epicenter family, okay? The Epicenter Concert Series is what we call the kind of original Epicenter or the trunk mount Epicenter as I call it. I call it the trunk mount because normally it gets mounted in the trunk back by the amplifiers, that sort of thing. So the trunk mount Epicenter is going to be just like the one that you see here. This is your traditional Epicenter um, RCA line in. Excuse me, wrong side, I'm backwards here. RCA line in, RCA line out. It is just a simple pass through, basically, if you wanna think of it that way. So if you already have a system in place, you've already got your amplifier and your subwoofer and everything's all wired up, but you wanna add an epicenter, it makes it a really easy thing to add to a system because really all you've gotta do is grab a short, maybe one foot, two foot RCA, and basically you're just putting this in the signal path. Now. We'll talk more about installation in a few minutes and dig more into this stuff a little bit deeper. But first, I just want to talk about what all is available in the Epicenter family. So in the trunk mount series, or the, the concert series, I should call it, that's the proper name, uh, they are available in black or white, as you can see on your screen. Uh, the colors make absolutely no difference. There are some funny uh, myths out there that uh, certain colored ones sound better than the other, or uh, the white one has more power, or the black one is is got a stronger voltage, or you know all these funny myths. And the truth of it is, guys, they are exactly the same. It's literally just a matter of which color metal you want on the thing. So uh, I hate to dispel the the myths that uh, <laughs> one is different or better than the other, but really the white epicenter is the only product that we still make in white. Um, we used to make pretty much all of our products in this uh, uh, kind of salmon gray, we called it. And then we made them in okay, white as works. well. Now all of them are the uh, black with the blue, like you see on the ones here. Just just to me. I'm not going back there and checking any um, of this stuff, And then so. the Epicenter Concert Series is the one item that we still offer in white. Should okay, well, some of it's still on order too. Classic look. So um, let me see who is not muted here. Looks like we got it taken care of. Anyhow, so on to the Epicenter Plus. This is another one that's in the Epicenter family. The Epicenter Plus is a cool piece. Um, the Epicenter Plus is a combination of essentially a high to low converter, an Epicenter, and it does have an auxiliary input. The auxiliary input at first glance, you kind of think, well, why would I need an aux in on an epicenter? But it actually makes a lot of sense. If you're going to do a full range system and you're gonna use the Epicenter Plus, as your kind of gateway to that factory stereo. So you're gonna bring in two channels of audio from the factory system into your Epicenter Plus using the uh, high level inputs. Okay, great. Now we're gonna feed our uh, main output out to our maybe, um, maybe one of the uh, 6XSs or something like that, or just out to our amplifiers. That's fine too, if you wanna go straight up to the amplifiers. But the cool part is, is now you've got an aux in. So now you've got the ability to switch between that factory radio signal and the aux source, whether that's an iPod, satellite radio, whatever it is, and you're feeding that aux source out to your whole rest of your system, your amplifiers, all of your speakers, et cetera. So now obviously, if all you're doing with your Epicenter Plus is using it as a way to just add a subwoofer to your system, then that aux input isn't gonna do you a whole lot of good because it would only play out of the subwoofer, which obviously isn't gonna make a whole lot of sense if you're trying to do a uh, full range system, that sort of thing. So the next piece that we're going to talk about is the Epicenter in-dash. The Epicenter in-dash is a really cool piece too. Um, this one's unique. 
This is the half din in dash unit is what we call it. Uh, previously, it was called the in dash, or excuse me, the epicenter 160 or the epic 160. It is more or less the same product. A um, couple of things have changed, such as the um, illumination on these guys uh, can be made to uh, be blue or red, whereas it used to be uh, green or amber. So we've changed that. Uh, blue and red just kind of match a little bit more with the modern interiors and, and you know, dash lights and gauge clusters, that sort of thing. But the in-dash is a cool piece. I mean, there's a lot of cars out there that have the space for this in the dash, or it could be mounted under the dash or something like that if you want to, especially with a lot of these new radios that are coming out. I have one in my own car, um, like the, the Halo from Alpine or the new floating tablet style screens from Kenwood, Pioneer, uh, Alpine. All of these guys are making these um, cool you know, big monster screens, but they're in a single din chassis a lot of the times. Well, great. Now you've got room to put something like this down there if you wanted to. So it's a, it's a cool application for it. You know, it would work in a lot of cars. So with the in-dash piece, this has everything that an epicenter has built in. One of the differences between the epicenter in-dash and the standard epicenter, a couple of things that may be obvious, it's got an SPL meter built right into it. The microphone is actually located on the face of the product, which is cool. Uh, it is capable and, and accurate up to 160 dB, which is pretty slick. Um, it's a great piece for guys that you know want to show off to their friends, see how loud their system is, that sort of thing. But it also does have a voltage meter built in. So there's a little button on the front here we can click and we can switch between voltage or SPL. It also does have a peak hold. So we can tell it to hold on whatever the highest number that registers on there is. There's also a couple little indicators on the face of the epicenter in dash, um, and those will tell you when the epicenter circuitry is being used, and it will also start to flash when you hit 120 dB or higher as just kind of a gentle reminder that, hey, this is pretty loud. You're, you're probably starting to do damage to your ears at a certain point, right? So. I've got this one set to red illumination. Like I said, there's a little jumper inside on this guy to switch it to blue, and we'll get into that stuff in a moment. Uh, but this also has the restoration on and off on the face, which is pretty cool. You can instantly hear the difference between the epicenter on or epicenter off just by flipping a switch. You don't have to turn the knob. So same features as a standard epicenter, like I said, just with a couple of extra goodies in there. So a uh, question from Todd. Matthew, is the volt setting on the in-dash piece for signal voltage or battery voltage? That's a great question, Todd. Thank you for asking. Uh, it is system voltage. So it's going to be your, you know, like right now, I've got 13.9 volts coming from my uh, power supply here on the desk. So it's a good question, though. I like that. Thank you. So let's dive into a little bit deeper, you know, kind of what these pieces are and what they do. And we'll play with them a little bit and I'll take the covers off some of them and kind of show you a little bit more of the ins and outs of these products as well. So I'm going to start with the traditional uh, Epicenter Concert Series. I've got a working one mounted on my little demo rig here. Um, this is actually wired to a LC 1.800 amplifier. Uh, and I've got a couple of uh, old school Rockford 8s behind me here that I grabbed out of my garage this morning. And I don't know how well it's going to show up on a microphone, but I was going to just, you know, play some music through it and just give you guys an idea of kind of how big of a difference it really does make, um, you know, using an epicenter versus, you know, trying to jack with uh, an EQ or gains or any of that other stuff. So I'm just going to play, um, play a song that I know has some decent bass in it already, okay? And we'll get an idea here. So let's start that playing. And should. All right, so probably not gonna be able to see on video very much, you know, how much these are moving, but we're getting some decent bass out of those woofers right now. My uh, phone is feeding into the epicenter, out of the epicenter to that LC 1.800. The epicenter is all the way down right now, okay? Um, I'm not going to change the song. I'm not going to change the volume. I'm not going to change anything except for bring the epicenter level up. And so we are now taking a song that already had some bass. And you can actually hear the port noise coming from this thing because we're, uh, we're shaking the whole building now from two eights. You might be able to see the woofers moving in the video with that one. But so you can see that it literally takes a song that already had some decent bass to it and already you know, sounded okay and just made it have a ton of bass and makes it really, really slam if this was in a car. If we take a song that doesn't have a whole lot of bass, okay, so we take something that's maybe, um, 
you know, maybe uh, more guitar based or something a little bit more like classic rock types type music. And, you know, it's still going to have obviously a little bit of maybe punchy type bass in there, but probably not a ton. And we'll hear what a difference the epicenter makes with something like that. And that's one of those things where the epicenter really makes a lot of sense is for a lot of guys that listen to music that doesn't have a lot of bass in the first place. You know, there's a lot of fans of the epicenter that listen to classic rock or they listen to, um, you know, Hispanic music that doesn't have a lot of bass in the first place. Um, this is a great tool for that. So same thing here. I've got the phone up to about three quarters volume. You can hear or probably not hear that there's really hardly any bass to this song. Okay. If we take our epicenter though, and we bring up this knob a little bit, I'm now making this song that otherwise had almost zero bass now shake the building. Okay. And I can really bring this up. You can almost see my shirt blowing in the breeze from all the uh, air moving out of that port. So anyway, you guys get the idea. I'm not going to spend all day uh, playing music. You can't hear it very well through uh, computer speakers and phone speakers anyway, but you get the idea. It really does take a song that otherwise is not that impressive in your car and, and really takes it to a whole nother level. It's, they're really, really fun to play with too. So, um, so let's start with the, the standard Epicenter concert series. So this is our, like I mentioned, kind of trunk mount concert series epicenter. When you're looking at your connections on here, it's pretty straightforward. We have our uh, RCA in, RCA out. These are balanced inputs. You can change them to unbalanced inside, and I'll show you that in a second. We have a plug-in for the dash remote, and then we just need remote turn on, 12 volts, and ground. So really, really easy hookup. It uses our standard little uh, detachable Phoenix type connectors. And then the dash remote that these come with is a nice looking dash remote. It's all metal housing. And this can be taken apart and flush mounted if you want. Um, and you can flush mount it with or without the LED. But we made sure to design this in a way that's really easy to flush mount and looks nice when it's done that way. So all you've got to do is disassemble this, uh, drill a hole in a dash panel or center console, something like that. Backload the knob, tighten down the nut that goes on it, and it looks like a custom install. These plug in with just a typical RJ11 type phone cord, more or less, and of course that comes with it in the package too. So that's what's basically going to come with it. When we take the uh, uh, epicenter and have a look at the top here, you have two controls on top. We have wide and we have sweep. The best way to think of this, you guys, is sweep is more or less going to choose what your center frequency is or what frequency we want the epicenter to focus on is a good way to think of it. Now, all the way to the left-hand side or towards the small side of the gap on here, okay, is going to be 27 hertz, okay? So that's the lowest frequency that we can have the epicenter focus on. The other side, the wide side of that little uh, uh, sweep that's on there is 63 hertz. And so when these come shipped from the factory, they're set straight up and down at noon, which is about 40 hertz center frequency. When we look at wide, this is how wide of a, if you picture a bell on your RTA and we're affecting this, the center frequency we've chosen, how wide do we want that frequency, the other frequencies around it to be affected? Do we want to try to just narrow in on one certain frequency? Okay, then we're going to not want a whole lot of width. If we want this all the way to the right, now we're going to affect pretty much all frequencies um, anywhere from, uh, what is it on this one? It is from 30 to 250. So all the way down to you know, the uh, small side here, we can really narrow down what we want to focus on all the way to the other side you're going to be affecting pretty much everything from 30 hertz to 250 hertz. So that's the easiest way to think of it. I think that's one of the most commonly asked questions with the epicenter is how do I set it up? What am I supposed to set these knobs to? And a good starting point for a lot of guys, if it's their first time using an epicenter or they just bought it and they're not sure you know, how to set it up, put them both at 12 o'clock, put them both at noon or, or straight up and down, which is where they come shipped anyway, and start with it there for a good majority of systems, that's going to be really pretty solid. Um, there's another setting inside we're going to look at uh, as well. When you take the top cover off of your epicenter, uh, inside of here, we've got a couple of little programming jumpers. The programming jumpers do a couple of different things, okay? The main one that you see up at the top here is your base output. And so we can essentially limit how much voltage is coming out of our epicenter based on this jumper. Now this comes shipped at five volts. 
Five volts is a pretty good jump off point that's gonna work with the majority of amplifiers that are out there. And that's really what this is about. This is not about how much voltage is coming from your head unit. This is about how much voltage your amplifier's input section can handle. If you have an amplifier that will handle seven and a half volts or 10 volts, the, the higher two settings on the epicenter, you can certainly jump up to those and get more out of those systems. But there's a lot of amplifiers out there that will not accept a seven and a half or 10 volt input. Um, it, it'll literally put the thing straight into protection or cause issues or just sound terrible. So um, we don't want to overload the input section. We want to try to match that as best as we can. So settings on that portion of it, we have 2.5 volts, 5 volts, 7.5 volts, and 10 volts. And it's just little jumpers. We pull these and move them to where we need and away we go. The other couple of things on the insides here is we have our balanced and unbalanced. 99% of the time, you're gonna leave these in balance, which is where they ship. There are, um, as our owner's manual explains, there are a few units out there, a few head units out there that are looking for some sort of a ground on the RCA shields. That's when we would move these to unbalanced, or sometimes it can help to get rid of weird noise issues and that sort of things in some systems. Um, chances are you're not going to need to mess with that, so leave that in the balanced position for most systems. Um, the other one that we have on this guy is our PFM module. And we'll talk more about PFM modules in just a moment. But this is another common question that a, guy, a lot of guys look at and they say, well, the epicenter is a bass product, okay? It's all about making bass and making bass louder. Why the PFM? What's a PFM and what do I do with it? The PFM module is essentially a subsonic filter, okay? A lot of you have heard that term before. A lot of you are familiar with what that does. A PFM module or a subsonic filter is essentially limiting what type of information is gonna be played on the low end. So the Epicenter Concert Series comes shipped with a 33 hertz, 18 dB filter built in. That's what the subsonic is. Why 33 hertz? Because it's the most common tuning frequency for a lot of um, ported boxes, okay? So when we look at these systems and we look at the, the common uh, setups and the common stuff that gets put into a lot of these cars. A lot of guys are using prefab ported boxes in, in your common everyday systems that get done at shops, right? So when you're doing those common systems and you're grabbing that ported box off the shelf, or maybe it's a ported box from a manufacturer, that sort of thing, 32, 33 hertz is a really, really common tuning frequency for a lot of those systems, right? So that's why these come with that 33 hertz uh, subsonic built in. Now, you can change it, okay? So that's one of the other questions we get a lot is, well, I don't want it to limit it at 33 hertz. I want, you know, whatever, 15 or 25 or something else. So you can change the PFM module. These PFM modules are just a little chip. You basically pull them straight out and you can order a different module from us. I'll show you that here in just a second. And you can swap that in and, and get a different result. So let me pull up those. There you go, there's the PFM module. So if you go to our website and you wanted to order a different one, you can see that we have options down to 15 Hertz and you can you know, take your pick if you want something different. We do also offer a blank PFM module if you wanted to create your own. PFM modules are essentially, uh, as you can see towards the left there, resistors and they're soldered into place to create the right frequency. Um, you can get a blank one and make your own if you're really an advanced user and want to, but with all of the options we have, we should have something for just about everybody. Um, I had a raised hand a second to go. I think it was Jared. Jared, if you want to unmute yourself, if you have a question you want to ask, uh, go ahead and unmute and ask away, sir. All right. Well, if Jared comes back and decides to uh, unmute, feel free. Anyhow, so with the Epic uh, Concert Series, the Epicenter Concert Series, this has the PFM module built into it. That's a common question we get on a lot of these is, why is that there? What does it do? Can I change it? So we just address those, those main concerns with that. Uh, the other thing on the Concert Series is the actual little logo itself. And if you have a look at the one on my uh, display here, if I start playing this, we should see, uh, Again. There we go. The little epicenter logo on here does light up and flash depending on the music. So it actually shows you that the epicenter is working is basically what that's for you guys. So that's another one that we get uh, asked a lot is, well, I see the little light on it's flashing and flickering. Is it supposed to do that? Yes, it is supposed to do that. Okay. It is not a, uh, a defect or anything like that. 
So let's have a look at the Epicenter Plus. Now that we talked about the concert series, the Plus is the next one down. So with the Plus, uh, this does have our PFM module in it as well. So on the topic of PFM modules, this does have that same 33 hertz, 18 dB uh, slope uh, subsonic filter or PFM module built in it. Same thing, we can take the top cover plate off uh, and change that out for a different frequency if you prefer. I recommend most guys stay with something that's matched to their tuning frequency. So if your box is tuned to 32, 33 hertz or right around there, I would stick with that 33 hertz uh, module. If your box is tuned to 20 or 25 hertz, maybe you do want to change it out for a PFM that's uh, uh, you know closer suited to that. The whole idea is to try to not get the woofer to unload below tuning frequency and to not you know, we don't want to send a massive amount of signal at 20 hertz in a box that's tuned to 32 or 35 hertz, something like that. We're trying to help prevent damage to woofers, and that's why that PFM module subsonic filter was introduced in the first place, was to help consumers and end users not destroy gear, um, because nobody wants that, right? So with the Epicenter Plus, like I mentioned earlier, this is an OEM integration device with an Epicenter built in. So if you were thinking about using a high to low adapter and then feeding that signal into your epicenter and then out of your epicenter to your amplifiers, you can certainly do that. But if you just get the epicenter plus, you don't have to. Okay. Now, uh, not to confuse things, the one that's in my hand here is gray. This is an older model that I'm holding on to. It's just what I had on my desk here. The one that's on your screen right now is the current model. That's what the epicenter plus will look like if you were to order it today and uh, uh, pick one up. So, like I mentioned, this does have your um, high-level input. One of the cool things on the high-level input on this one, you guys, is much like our LC2i or some of our other high-to-low adapters, the uh, main input on this, the speaker-level input, will accept up to 40 volts of high-level input. So you can use this in a factory amplified premium sound system and grab signal from the outputs of a factory amplifier. Uh, most high to low adapters obviously are not going to be happy if they're hooked up to a system that already has a factory amp and you try to pass that through an inexpensive high to low adapter. The Epicenter Plus will handle it just fine. Um, like I said, we've, we've got 40 volts of input capability. Um, 40 volts essentially equates to about 400 watts. So you're never going to run into a factory sound system uh, with pretty much any vehicle on the road that you can't use these products with. Same thing with the, uh, all of the Epicenter pieces. As far as the uh, RCA input, we have the uh, ability to accommodate um, 15 volts of uh, line level input. So I, I don't know of any uh, factory, or excuse me, any aftermarket head unit that's gonna have anywhere near 15 volts of output. But just like we do with a lot of our products, we wanna overbuild them and make sure that they're gonna stand up and, and hold up to any abuse and that sort of thing. So they will accept up to 15 volts of low level input. Uh, not that you're probably gonna be anywhere near that, even with a, a line driver probably. So um, as far as hooking up you know, the Epicenter Plus, like I mentioned, you're gonna grab speaker level and feed it into this. The main thing to keep in mind though, when you're putting in an Epicenter Plus or, or uh, any of these products, but especially with the Epicenter Plus, is if you're grabbing speaker signal and you're grabbing it from a factory installation or a factory amplifier, we wanna make sure that whatever we're tying into is gonna have enough signal or enough uh, uh, frequency range to work properly with the Epicenter. All of the Epicenter products, the Epicenter Plus, the Epicenter Concert Series, and the Epicenter Indash, the Epicenter technology is looking at the uh, frequency spectrum and the incoming signal up to a thousand hertz. So when you're tying in in a factory vehicle with an Epicenter Plus, we wanna make sure that we're not tying into the factory subwoofer leads, okay? Because chances are those factory subwoofer leads are already crossed over at maybe 80, 100, 150 hertz, something like that how is the epicenter going to do its job if it can't see anything above that crossover frequency, right? So that goes for all of the epicenter products. When we're installing a epicenter concert series, if we're using that aftermarket radio, most likely if you're using the concert series, um, we want to make sure that if you are using the subwoofer output from that radio, we want to make sure that we either have the subwoofer output uh, crossover turned off so that it's just full range, or we want to turn up that crossover point as high as it'll go. So if you've uh, put an epicenter in and you're not getting the results that you were expecting, chances are you're choking your epicenter by only feeding it you know, 80 hertz and below or something like that. 
because chances are most of us set our, our low pass filter for our sub output on our aftermarket radios somewhere in the 70 to 100 hertz range. Well, again, if the epicenter is trying to look at upstream audio information so that it can decide where to inject some lower bass, if the lowest bass note present is above the crossover frequency, the epicenter is not going to be able to do its job properly. So just keep that in mind. If we are using the concert series, we wanna turn the crossovers on the head unit to as high as they'll go or full range, and then use the crossovers at your amplifier to actually you know, low pass it so that the woofer is not playing higher frequencies. If we're using the epicenter in dash, the same thing goes. We would wanna run the uh, output from that aftermarket head unit that's gonna go into our epicenter. We wanna make sure to turn that crossover up as high as it'll go or turn it completely off. If we are using the epicenter plus and we're grabbing speaker signal, again, make sure that whatever you're tying into has enough uh, of a range of, of, of frequencies or audio information that the epicenter can do its job. So if the vehicle maybe has some, let's say rear five by sevens in the rear deck, but it also has a factory woofer, if we're gonna put in the epicenter plus, we would wanna grab signal from those rear uh, five by sevens rather than from that factory woofer. The epicenter is going to be able to do its job much, much better and sound the way that you're expecting if we grab the right signal to begin with. And of course, if you have an RTA, maybe like the DMRTA or something like that, you can verify what signals are present on that on the uh, leads that you tied into before you finish up your installation. So let's move on to the uh, epicenter in dash and, and how that would be installed and that sort of thing. Uh, with the Epic in dash or the Epic 160, the epicenter in dash, whatever you want to call it, some people have the older model that actually says Epic 160. The newer models will actually say epicenter in dash. Um, you can always tell the epicenter in dash is available with red or blue illumination. The previous version, the Epic 160, lit up in green or amber. Okay. So when you're looking at the uh, input section on this one, we have our uh, power, ground, remote turn on, and illumination. If you do not hook up the illumination circuit on this, this will not light up, okay? So it will still turn on, but if you actually want the backlight to come on, you do need to tie into that illumination circuit or just wire it with the uh, switched power so that the unit can turn on and light up at the same time, that's fine. Uh, and then the remote input on here is to tell the epicenter in dash to turn on. That is not a remote output to your amplifier. That's a remote input to tell the epicenter in dash to turn on. Now, one interesting thing on the epicenter in dash, you guys, is that this one does not have a PFM module built into it. So if I take the top cover off and we have a look at the guts here, there are some jumpers in here. There are some settings that you can change, but there is no PFM module on this. So if you want an epicenter, but you don't want a subsonic filter at all, you want to just have something that is going to play down to as low as you want, uh, the epicenter in dash may be the way to go for you. So as far as jumpers inside that you can change, we have our illumination down here. Again, it's just a matter of moving some jumpers, whether we want it to light up uh, red or blue. I'll change those real quick while we're looking at this. Plug this guy back in. And now we've got blue illumination, pretty cool. Um, the other one in here is the uh, ground isolation. So like many of our products, we do have a ground isolation circuit built in. The idea is to be able to help installers troubleshoot when there's any sort of noise issues. So if you've installed an Epicenter 160 or an Epic in-dash and you're getting some sort of noise issues, some sort of a turn on pop, turn off pop, uh, engine noise, clicks, hiss, whine, whatever it is, you can try to use that ground isolation circuit to try to get rid of that noise. The way it ships out of the box, that ground isolation circuit is set to what's called ISO. Essentially what that means, you guys, is that the ground that's coming to this input terminal is isolated or separated from the ground from the audio circuitry, okay? We also have a uh, setting for um, just ground, which is where we're gonna combine the two. So we're gonna use the ground from this and combine it or share it with the audio system ground, or we have ground uh, through resistance. So you can switch this to a jumper that'll put 200 ohms of resistance between the uh, power system ground and the audio portion ground. So one of those settings, the majority of the time will get rid of most noise issues in a lot of aftermarket installations. It's a great tool to be able to troubleshoot some of those installs. Um, we also do have on the Epicenter in-dash high level input. 
A lot of people don't realize that the epicenter in dash does also do high to low level conversion, which is pretty cool. So this doesn't have to be used with an aftermarket radio. If you have a spot in your dash, maybe your car came with the factory single din and there's a pocket below it, or maybe you just want to mount this under the dash or in the glove box or a, a custom console or something like that. You can certainly do that and you can use the high level inputs on this to do the conversion for you. Again, much like the Epicenter Plus, you don't have to have a separate high to low converter. We can just use what's built in here to be able to do that. It's pretty cool. So when we're looking at this one, uh, there are uh, a couple of other little jumpers in here uh, that are going to be just for um, testing and setup. Those aren't things that you're going to mess with. Those are over to the side here and they're basically not labeled. Uh, but there is a little uh, pot in here to be able to adjust the voltage. So if you use a multimeter and after installing this product, your voltage readout on the display is not quite accurate. It's off by you know half a volt or something like that you can actually turn the little potentiometer in here and be able to adjust this and get it to match up with the rest of your system, which is pretty cool. Um, oops, let me go here. <clears throat> so let's see here, let's see what kind of questions we have. Uh, what about adding the epicenter with a DM810? If I'm using a front rear sub Pioneer, uh, using five and six as the sub mono input, or is there a better way to add it? So yeah, if you're gonna use this with your uh, processor, whether it's the DM810 or any processor for that matter, um, there's a couple of good ways to go about the um, epicenter install. And it doesn't really matter whether it's the in-dash unit or the trunk mount unit, the concert series, it really doesn't make any difference which one it is. We just wanna make sure that we get the epicenter in the right portion of the signal path, okay? So the best way to think of the epicenter and where it should go, is that we want the epicenter to basically go after our EQ, but before our crossover, okay? So if we were gonna use it with a DSP, we would want the uh, epicenter to go, well, it kind of depends actually, but in most cases, we would probably want our epicenter to go before our DSP. If it's a factory system, if you're doing factory integration, you may want to go, um, go out of your DSP sub out, into your epicenter and then out of your epicenter to just your sub amp, if that's the case, if you're needing to do maybe signal summing and stuff like that prior, you know, inside the DSP, um, that would be a good way to do it. If it's an install where you're doing a DSP, but you have a factory or excuse me, an aftermarket radio, then it might make sense to do the epicenter first. So it kind of depends on the system and, and what's going to make the most sense for, for that specific you know, setup and, and et cetera. But for the example that was used, uh, the DM810 and then using the, the Pioneer system. So what I would do with that is I would go uh, the four channels, the, the front and rears from the Pioneer straight to the DSP. And then I would go from the Pioneer to the epicenter, from the epicenter to the DM810 on the sub input. And then everything else in the system would still be basically normal at that point. Um, and that way your epicenter is still seeing all of the frequencies it needs to see. Everything's still doing the job that it's supposed to, as long as I understood your uh, question correctly. So um, one of the other things that I always like to mention when you're installing an epicenter or, or any of these, um, no matter which model of epicenter it is, is make sure to flatten your EQ in your radio. So if you're not putting in a DSP, let's say you're just going to do a aftermarket radio, an epicenter, and an amplifier. Make sure to flatten the EQ, make sure to turn your bass boost off, make sure to turn your loudness feature off and all that stuff uh, before setting up your epicenter. Because you can a lot of times get some kind of funky results, uh, create way too much bass because you're already taking a boosted signal and then running it through an epicenter and you know, boosting it again or restoring it further. Um, so make sure to turn all of that stuff off before, uh, you know, installing your epicenter. And then once that's all done, I'm not saying to not use your EQ. I'm just saying I would turn all of that stuff to flat in your aftermarket radio prior to, you know, setting it up with the epicenter. Um, a couple of the other things that I wanted to kind of talk about a little bit was, you know, where these things go in the signal path. Uh, one of the really common questions we get with the epicenter is, hey, I'm putting in an LC2i and I'm putting in an epicenter and I'm just doing an add, add a sub to my you know, factory radio, to my factory sound system. So that's totally fine. You can certainly use the LC2i and run the signal out from the LC2i into the epicenter, out of the epicenter into your sub amp. 
The one thing to kind of keep in mind there is that, again, uh, like we talked about earlier, you may not need that LC2i. Now, excuse me, if your vehicle has, um, you know, base roll off, then by all means, use an LC2i, use the AccuBase to correct for roll off, and then send that signal out to your epicenter and out of your epicenter to your subamp. If it's a vehicle that doesn't have any sort of base roll off, and that's not something that you need, then in that case, just use the epicenter plus. Now you've got high to low level conversion or the epicenter in dash, and you've got high to low level conversion at that point, and you can do everything that you need right there. You wouldn't need an LC2i plus an epicenter. And believe it or not, that's probably one of the most common questions we get is uh, LC2i plus epicenter, some, some sort of mix there. Um, the other one that we get a lot is, you know, can I use the epicenter with blank? And the with blank is either, you know, a line driver or a uh, outboard crossover or an outboard EQ or whatever the case may be. You absolutely can. Just remember, like I said a few minutes ago, you want it to go after your EQ, but before your crossover. And again, I, I can't stress how important it is to feed enough signal into your epicenter to make it perform correctly. The guys that weren't happy with their epicenter, nine times out of 10, were feeding it a low pass signal. They turned their low pass on their deck to 80 hertz. They fed that signal into their epicenter, out of the epicenter to their subamp, and then they're not real happy with the results. And, and that's the biggest problem. So always remember with any of the epicenter products, they need to be able to see up into those upper frequency ranges so that they know where to restore that base and where to inject the right amount of base and, and at what frequency. Uh, because otherwise what you're gonna end up with, you guys, if you're wondering what would happen, here's what'll happen. What you'll have is that on some songs, no matter where the knob is on the epicenter, you're gonna end up with way too much bass or it's gonna be kind of, um, kind of warbly and like uh, kind of sound off. And then on other songs, it'll, it'll seem like it almost doesn't do anything. And the reason that it's not doing anything is because it can't see up into those frequencies enough to be able to do it. The other problem is, is that maybe the, the song has some bass that's right above the crossover frequency. So the epicenter is able to see that, that frequency and interpret it and restore bass below it. But it's also seeing it at a reduced level because it's past the crossover point. If that was full range, it would see all of that equally, and then your uh, knob settings would be able to be consistent, right? Speaking of the knob that comes at the epicenter, I mentioned earlier, these are all metal. They come apart really easily um, to be able to flush mount if you wanna do a custom, more custom install. But one of the other things that I should mention and a, and a common question that we get with these is, do I need the base knob that came with my amplifier and the epicenter, or should I just use the epicenter knob? Now it's a matter of personal preference, but what I'm gonna mention about it and the reason that I'm bringing it up is that they are not the same thing, okay? So if your vehicle or if your um, amplifier, I should say, not vehicle, if your amplifier came with its own bass knob, in most cases, we want to use it, okay? Because most amplifiers, the knob that comes with them is overall level control, whereas the epicenter knob is not a level controller, okay? Let me make that super, super clear. The knob that's on the epicenter, the, the dash mount control knob, the one that's in my hand, this is not to control overall sub volume. This is to control epicenter effect, okay? So when this is all the way down, the sub is still playing the same as it was. All you're doing when you're turning this up is adjusting how much effect you want to introduce from the epicenter. It does not change your overall you know, sub volume coming from your radio or from your uh, uh, factory aftermarket radio or whatever your signal is. So in a lot of cases, yes, you will want your sub volume control plus the epicenter knob. Because with the epicenter, obviously not every song is gonna need the same amount of effect. Some songs might need, not need it at all. Some songs might need it you know, halfway up. So it's definitely something you wanna have accessible. It's definitely something that you wanna have readily available that you can get to. Um, but I wouldn't go with just this. In most cases, I would say you're gonna need the epicenter knob and your amplifier's bass knob just to make things simple. So um, hopefully that clears up a lot of questions with that too. Um, that pretty much wraps up the majority of the training on the epicenter.